Hi, JD here again. Um, I was looking through loads and loads of documents the other day to set fire to most of it because I've bought a little garden furnace and I thought I'm going to get rid of all my uh, old documents. And I came across a old PCP agreement that my wife signed up to a few years ago. Um, and it was such a bad agreement that I thought I've got to share this with you to show you um, that even I didn't have a clue only a few years ago when buying cars um, and how you can get sucked into um, paying for something unnecessarily, really. I'll keep it short, but essentially we fell into the trap that most people, I think, will fall into when they're going to buy a car on a PCP. And that trap was, OK, sir, OK, madam, what would you like to pay per month on this car? And we'd seen an advert and we only wanted a, a run around. It was for, it was a I tell you what it was. It, it was a Citroen C1. Um, it had done 12,000 miles and it was for sale at a car supermarket for about five and a half thousand pounds. So we saw that advert and I think it said something like 110 pounds a month, 115 pounds a month. And we thought, oh, that's OK for a run around. Great. So we went in and. I remember being fairly cute at the time because I think initially after we'd I think we put a hundred pounds deposit down um, and I think the agreement came back at something like 112 pounds a month and I said hang on a minute I thought it was 110 pounds a month so I argued a little bit and I managed to squeeze a couple of pounds a month off but I never actually really appreciated what a ridiculous deal it was until only the other day when I came across a copy of the old finance agreement and I'm going to show you how bad it was because I fell into the trap of not worrying about what the APR was, not worrying really about what the purchase price was, and that's the golden rule, only being concerned with what is the monthly payment and never fall into that trap. Because if you go into a sales uh, garage and say, right, I've got a budget of £350 a month, they're going to be rubbing their hands because they're going to go, OK, well, I'm sure we can uh, get this card £350 a month and that's his budget. Well, actually, you might be able to get it for £300 a month if you actually delve into things a little bit deeper. So here is said agreement. And I was actually quite surprised when I actually read this. So let's have a look what it says. Look, cash price of goods was £5,507. Uh, the deposit we paid was just £100. So the amount we borrowed was £5,407. And this was on a 49 month term. OK, so 48 equal payments guaranteed future value or balloon payment in month 49 and the balloon payment was whether it tells me on here um, I don't think I've worked on the screen but I'll tell you what it was it was 2117 okay so we borrowed 5500 and sorry we paid 5507 we paid 100 pounds deposit 5407 to finance and we had a guaranteed future value balloon payment in month 49 of 2117 look at these charges so not only have we got 1681 pounds 24 in interest charges and bearing in mind we've only borrowed five and a half thousand pounds we've also got 195 pounds credit facility fee and 185 pounds credit facility fee now i'm guessing that this is kind of the what might be termed the acceptance fee and this might be kind of the i don't know some other admin fee at the end of the agreement and there's also a 10 pound purchase free fee now i'm happy to report that certainly on all the agreements i've had lately uh credit facility fee one and two if you like aren't there anymore you tend to pay a 10 pound purchase fee at the end and nothing else which is great because if you remember from my previous video when I talked about different rate terms, APR, AER, annual rate, flat rate, etc. APR can often be greatly inflated because of these extra charges. So APR takes into account not only the higher purchase interest rate charges here, but also all these other charges as well. And that shows really, because look down here, our interest rate is 10.73% per annum. Now, if that's not bad enough, 
the APR on the agreement was 14%. And that's because annual interest rate, sorry, the interest rate here is an annual rate, so it's not a compounded rate. And because we pay monthly, we need to compound it. And I'll, I'll recap how we do that in a minute. But also, because of these ridiculous charges, we've got £1,681 in interest, but we've actually got £390 of additional charges, which means our total charge for credit is £2,071 on a £5,500 agreement. And that's why our APR is so much bigger than our interest rate. This interest rate here is our annual rate of interest only. So that's where the 1681 comes from. The APR takes into account this additional £390. Quick recap, if you ever see interest rate of 10.73 per annum and you want to work out what that is as an annual equivalent rate, an annual equivalent rate will be the same as the APR if there are no other charges. So I think on the previous video, because I only had a £10 extra charge, if you like, on that agreement, the APR was pretty much identical to the annual equivalent rate because there are no other charges. But notice here it's so much bigger because we've got a massive amount of additional charges. But anyway, how do we work out um, annual equivalent rate from our annual rate? Well, all you need to do, little little example here, all you do is you take the annual interest rate, which they're quoting was 10.73%, you divide that by 12, which gives us 0 0.008, so 0.89% a month, and then you compound that back up by taking it and multiplying it to the power of 12. So, so rather than multiplying it by 12, you're doing it to the power of 12, which is like squaring and cubing. And that gives you the equivalent annual equivalent rate because we are compounding it. So month one, you've got so much interest. And then month two, you've got interest on your interest. And then month three, you've got interest on your interest on your interest. And that's why we need to do it to the power of 12. So all I've done here, look, is taken the annual equivalent rate, divided it by 12. And then here, look, I've just taken that figure and raised it to the power of 12. You'll notice I've added one on. You have to add one on because if you compound something, anything that starts with a zero to the left of the decimal place is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So we have to take that monthly interest rate, add on one to it, and then we can raise it to the power of 12. Anyway, that's a little bit boring. But essentially, it comes out as an, as an annual equivalent rate of 11.3. Okay, so if there were no other charges, the APR on this agreement would have been 11.3. But because we've got all these additional £390 of charges, that's why um, the APR is actually 14%. But what a shocking agreement. I cannot believe that we signed up for this. We were paying £109.92 a month with a final value of 2117 If I go over to my PCP spreadsheet and the kind of APR I would be aiming to get give or take 1% would be about 6.9, 7.9, nowhere near 14%. So if we took that example, and I'm going to assume that there's no other charges, so we've just got this £10 purchase, uh, purchase fee. 5507, £100 deposit, guaranteed future value that we said was 2117, and an APR of 6.9 and a 48 month term. So that's 48 equal payments, month 49 being our GFV, we should have been looking at paying about £90 a month. So the thing is, because we're borrowing quite a small amount of money, £5,500, it doesn't seem that bad. You know, it's £19 a month less. So yeah, it's a good saving. But imagine if you were paying 14% on a... I tell you what, let's, let's put in my figures from the M140. 31116. 31116, try again. Deposit was 1049. Guaranteed for future value is 14117. Now let's put in 14% APR. So 47 month term because I'm with BMW Finance and they do term minus one. £591.22. I'm actually paying 
411. So nearly 200 pounds a month if I'd have bought my BMW M140 on that ridiculously high APR. So please, 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 when you go in to buy any car, never fall into the trap of, oh, what is your monthly budget? Forget that. You want to look at the APR, you want to look at the purchase price, okay? Nothing else. I think that was quite interesting, and I've said interesting again, but it is interesting. I hope I can save you money by um, all these examples. Please comment and subscribe. I'm getting some really nice comments off you guys. I really appreciate it. It's encouraging me to make more and more of these videos. So um, I'm glad you're watching. Please send me more comments. Please email me at the email address that I published at the start of the video. If you've got any general questions, I love helping people. Um, I'll, see, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.